company like ours, you're constantly overcoming adversity. It really is a function of, is your ego tied to the underlying mission of the company? I don't think we've ever had here at Soto Kinetics a question on any day as to whether what we're doing is making a meaningful difference in people's lives. I think to my explorations and what it takes to set up an expedition, the planning that is involved, the selection of the team members, trying to really predict all the challenges and obstacles that will come along the way, how is that similar to what you do? Looking to discover something that's new is never just following a series of steps to get there. You encounter hurdles, you encounter disappointments, you encounter successes all along the way. So it's really a meandering path. And I think you can't be afraid of failure either. A lot of what we do is, is forging that trail. If, you, if you're in it for the right reasons, then these become potholes along the road. They become impediments. You turn them into stepping stones and you turn that into something that might yield an even greater success. That affords a new opportunity. And whether that's in science, where you can be very objective about data, or when you're thinking about the passions that drive our business, there's so many things that you can't plan for or anticipate. I was setting off deep in the Amazon to areas that were completely remote and unexplored. And I have had a history throughout my career of always choosing to study animals that had never been studied before because of the fact that they were so rare, so elusive and so difficult, or the terrain in which they lived in posed such challenges that a lot of explorers abandoned ship, you know, before they got there. How do you look at those obstacles and challenges and what you do? You know, ultimately, I think you endure because over six million people have some form of heart failure in the United States. It's a tremendous burden to patients, you know, to their families, to society, and we need innovation to be able to think of how to reduce that patient burden. A lot of the medicines we've used to treat heart failure are medicines that were developed to treat hypertension or treat diabetes. You know, they weren't specifically developed to treat heart failure. Companies like ours that are developing new heart failure drugs, you know, need to think innovatively about the business of how to do that. You know, how do you bring together this team and, and be able to keep them together and executing on this? The fact that we embarked on something that would be as innovative as it was, was unusual. Most companies would be very satisfied creating a fast follower to an existing medicine, a marginal improvement as would reduce that time of development and the cost of development. Somewhat through naivete, but also I think we were uh, just very ambitious. We set about to discover new cardiovascular medicines when everybody else was moving to the exit on cardiology because it does take so long. And even large pharmaceutical companies were looking at this as unlikely to be worth the investment for the return. I can see a very genuine passion and care for the people that you're creating these medicines for. It shows that you have heart, and it also makes it very clear why you've been able to survive over the last 20 years as you get to this point is because it's done really with, with heart. Well, you can relate to this. Why do you do what you do as hard as it is sometimes? If you know that you're doing it for the right reasons, uh, you can overcome the adversity and the challenges, and you can find a path through the forest to what ultimately will be uh, the next major milestone. When you're meeting patients where they are, it's pretty easy to know which path to take. And in our case, I think we've been authentic to that conviction and that commitment.